they should stick with their diversified portfolio. Um, actually, if you uh, are in a market where um, the stock market is going up and down and up and down, the uh, professional advice is to rebalance. Then you're selling when the market is up because you, you started 60-40 but now it's 70-30, stocks versus bonds, and you should buy you know, when the market goes down. Uh, the amount that you make extra by, uh, by uh, rebalancing uh, isn't so great that uh, if it's going to bother you, going to keep you up night, if, you, if it's inconvenient, don't bother. Just stick with your 60-40 or whatever you, know, whatever you had. Uh, when you add new money, you should be mindful of whether you're overweighted with stocks or underweighted with stocks and then fill in the gap as you invest. There's a wonderful book called Extraordinary Popular Delusions and the Madness of Crowds by McKay. It was written, I think, somewhere in the 1850s. And it was talking about the South Sea bubble and the tulip mania. Uh, uh, Bernard Baruch read this book in the uh, late 1920s and he decided that the stock market in the late 1920s was a bubble and he shorted the market. I, I don't have enough courage to short the market because the market could go up and you could be wiped out in the short run even though you're uh, right in the long run. But uh, in the late 1990s, my chiropractor kept telling me about the ho uh, wonderful hot tips that his patients were giving him and how much money he was making in the late 1990s with the with these wonderful dot com dot com, uh, so I gave him a copy of, you know, extraordinary popular delusions and the madness of crowds, uh, and you know, come two thousand two thousand one, he would say, Harry, I really should. I I read the book; it was a lot of fun, but I didn't pay any attention. I really should. Um, so the answer is, uh, well, it's it's a part of human nature and the cycle. Think about what happens. Um, Think, let's suppose we pick up the cycle where things have been pretty good, you know, for a while, and people are making money by putting money into stocks, and uh, so you put more money into stocks, which makes the stocks go up faster, and which causes more people to go into the mar market, which causes uh, the things to go up f uh, faster still, or go into, you know, uh, mortgages or whatever it is, and everybody sees that their uncle or their cousin or their neighbor is making money, so they don't want to miss out, so they put the money in. And then, you know, the last, uh, the last guy in, you know, uh, sort of is like a, pon it's like nature's own Ponzi scheme. Uh, once you run out of new investors, the thing starts down and now everybody realizes they're in a, you know, highly risky thing. So they start selling fast. It goes down faster than goes up and it crashes onto the bottom. Everybody says, you know, the sky is falling. It's the end of capitalism. And then, you know, things wait and things start to get a little better and better and better, and we're off and running again. But there were maybe two or three main contributors, uh, and I'm not going to be able to maybe sort out which came first and which came second. They're all sort of working together. One was uh, Congress had the objective of getting everybody into houses whether they could afford it or not. This was called the Community uh, Reinvestment Act. And uh, uh, month after month, and once a month at least, uh, the Wall Street Journal would have an a, uh, editorial saying, you know, Barney Frank, if you keep doing this, you're going to get us into big trouble. Uh, and uh, as a, a result of the uh, Community Reinvestment Act, um, Fannie Mae in particular and the banks in general were told they had to create lots and lots of what we now call subprime mortgages. The banks didn't want to hold on to this stuff. They were getting paid to generate it, so they would uh, sell it on to somebody who would combine them into collateral CMOs, collateralized mortgage obligations. Now if you have a, a mortgage in, in which you have no money down, that's already infinitely leveraged. Uh, 
And now if you uh, put that into a CMO, collateralized, collateralized mortgage obligation, and add, uh, and add leverage, uh, and then you take tranches, slices of that, and send it off to places uh, that make CDOs, collateralized debt obligations, uh, and so pretty soon the structure is so complicated that nobody understands what's going on. So when the house of cards came crashing down, it was a big crash.